Athenians, playwrights, directors, lend us your ears. And a huge thank you to all of our Patreons. Thank you to the Pit Fighters, the First Swords, and all of the Bright Stars, Truth and Courage. Hello and welcome to the channel today as we review a 2024 release, historical fiction, and it has recently won the Waterstones Best Debut of the Year mm -hmm. Award. It is Glorious Exploits by Ferdia Lennon. So this is historical fiction, but it feels weird to categorise it as one. Yeah, genre, it feels it? like a contemporary fiction, but we it will does. get into that. Now, Will and I, it just this book knocked our socks off. It's probably it not did. a book that we'd usually want to read. My feet just start getting cold. Well, I, my feet are freezing, but luckily it's summer. So, uh, But, you know, Glorious Exploits by Ferdia Lennon is... One of a, a kind. really unique and independent book. Yeah. So it's historical fiction, as we said, it's set in 412 BC, and we follow two potters who have just recently lost their jobs yeah. at a factory, and it's set in Syracuse, which is, well, south of Italy, isn't it? Yeah. I believe. Uh, and it's set just after the Peloponnesian War between Sparta and Athens. Uh, and Athens, well, Sparta and Syracuse had this kind of alliance thing going yeah. on. Uh, Athens then decided to attack Syracuse, invaded, they lost. So in the story here in Syracuse, uh, we have a whole host of Athenian soldiers are prisoners and they are locked up, chained in a quarry and they're being fed terrible rations by the Syracusian soldiers. Um, and they're just kind of left to it until they inevitably die, perish, and, you know, just wither away, really. Yeah, and so it's quite horrifying in that mm -hmm. way. But that is the premise. We've got these two failed potters who they start to go down to the quarry. They give some food to these prisoners in return for prisoners who can speak some of the lines of Euripides plays, such as Medea. So now, Euripides you were, was yeah, an, an, Athenian play, play an Athenian playwright who was alive at that Time. So these two guys are really inspired by Euripides and his plays, yeah. his you know his words, his mono the monologues within them. They are really inspired. They absolutely love them, and they want to see the Athenians themselves deliver these lines. Yeah, they begin to have dreams of grandeur, and they dream of becoming directors and actually having a performance of a Euripides play with the cast being these Athenians. So one soldiers. thing leads after another, and they decide to set their own play. Yeah. And then they, the way they go about it is fantastic. And I've got to say, I'll stop. I'll, we'll stop talking about the premise there because I'd love for you to just you know discover it. For After that, it would be more than a premise and just it would be going spoilers. through what Although actually happens. I really yeah. want to talk spoilers, yeah. but we won't. But Glorious Exploits is a book that is one of my favourites of the year because it starts off so daft, so funny. I mean, it's got this kind of this. You know, it has got like an Irish sense of humour yeah, to it. Yeah, the vein of humour running through. The author throughout. is from Ireland. Uh, it doesn't feel like historical fiction. It feels like a contemporary fiction where the names have just been changed, really, to uh, to ancient Syracuse. And it's strange you say it. I feel like in one way, yes, but in another way, it does feel like a different culture, and I really enjoyed that. It's, it's really weird. This book is a bit of a paradox, where it feels really accessible, but it feels very different as well. It, it feels very, accessible, very yeah. unique, but it feels like something very uh, familiar. charming yeah. and familiar and... Like a comfort blanket yeah. as well, because it's so easy to read. So at the heart of the story are these two characters, these two potters, and immediately they're very different to one another. They have a great sense of humour. Mm -hmm. We're hooked into the story because of how funny and daft it is. Yeah. But quickly it becomes something else. It yeah. really pulls the rug from underneath your feet because as you are getting to know these Athenian soldiers, you're getting to know some of the characters who live alongside these potters, as you find out their backstories you discover there is a lot of heart to the story. There's a lot of sadness and melancholy within these characters. And you quickly start to feel kind of these pangs mm -hmm. of worry and sadness for these people that we are getting to know. Yeah, it is really just exceptional. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, as you said, I don't really know how it happened, but you become so attached to these characters. Because of If You Turn It, it's quite a small book. And a lot of it is our main characters, Lampo and Gelon. They're going through the streets, getting ready to direct this play. So they're going to... The um, costumers, they're, they're getting sponsors, they're, you know, they're getting the music set spending up. Spending time in the tavern, getting an audience. Yeah. And so when it's spread throughout all of that, a lot of the surrounding cast aren't in it too much. But when they're in it, they really make their presence known. Yeah. This is expert character craft, just really at its best. If you want to really find a book where all the characters feel 
alive and real and organic and natural. This is a book for you. I've never read a book with such minimal character focus that ha feels so big. Yeah. It's it's like this macro development, isn't it? And it, it's done so perfectly. And you know it is because when things start to happen to our characters, either positive or very negative, yeah. uh, the, it tugs at the heartstrings. You either feel such emotion at this kind of little victory they've got, or you just feel crushed by their defeat. Yeah. And it is just exceptional how you are so moved at so many different moments. Mm -hmm. And this is a book that... Oh, it had me weeping. I, th time. I think it struck a great balance between kind of it doesn't force a message down your throat but it's also quite philosophical isn't it of course it's about putting a play on it is about the power of language the power of performance and the power and of inspiration art, and yeah. how that can really offer solace to people going through such pain and torment and who are at kind of a crossroads in their life where they could go one direction or yeah. the other and of course which oh, is kind of one of the I really want to talk spoilers we read books can't. isn't it yes it is so because yeah obviously all us readers we find inspiration and power in art and fiction. And so really seeing that reflected yeah. in Glorious Exploits, it's just a nice little nugget, which is just really lovely. To and read. you're able to kind of strike these connections with like such ease. And, you know, immediately you feel this emotional connection to the mm -hmm. characters, to what's happening to them as well. And their, you know, their surroundings really as well. But the climax to this book is fantastic. There is a lot of heartbreak here uh, as well of joy. And there is a array of, of human hope. I would say, but Glorious Exploits has quickly become one of my favourite books of the year and possibly of all time. And I think Ferdia Lennon is a new voice to watch out for and I'm really excited to see what direction he goes in next because this book, like I said earlier, just blew me away. And I talked about kind of the themes of Glorious Exploits. Now I want to talk about the writing style. I think combined with those themes, there was a risk of it being a little bit pretentious, but I think Ferdia Lennon just does a brilliant job of making sure it's not at all. It really just shows a lot about the human spirit and that's what he reveals in this book and at the risk of being repetitive it's just extraordinary how he does this in short page count with characters who are so conflicted and you don't necessarily love them because they've got such great flaws and you don't really have enough time to see many of their virtues but you love them because of how raw and human they are and I'm quickly going to read out a quote that just gives a little insight into this. If I'm honest, some days I still come here to sniff and stroll and lose myself in other worlds. And like when I was a kid, I wonder if the real places are anything like I'm imagining. And just like then, I wince. For something tells me I'll never know, but it's still a buzz. And that is just a quote that really stuck out to me. So he's talking about him and his friend, they used to, when they're children, go to the market and kind of inhale all the scents. Imagine they were in Carthage or Rome or Athens somewhere outside of Syracuse. And it's that paradox that you find many paradoxes in life as you that they feel liberated and free from this kind of prison of mm. being in one place yeah. through being in this market. But also it reminds them that they are caged and because of their economic circumstance, they can't leave. And it's really just, Freddie Lennon just perfectly caught that paradox that yeah. you can really feel liberated, but caged at the same time and he does that at so many different moments in glorious exploits it's like how holding this play they find themselves just really liberated by being a director but also they know that there is a finality to this that there is a timeline and that it's not going to last forever and so it's almost trying to just make the most of every second and so this is really a book that is not heavily plot driven it's more about the human spirit about kind of what it is to be alive and it's about human relationships and what they can offer yeah. as well and it's just a truly unique read yeah and these characters all have extreme flaws mm -hmm. they and but somehow they're all brought together yeah. through this you know this performance of euripides different plays and uh, and it's it's just a masterpiece that, yeah. i think that's the only word it is, is it, for it. it can be quite brutal but if you can cope with that i imagine many people watching this camera because they're fantasy readers there's a lot of brutal action in fantasy books but if you can get beyond that this is a book i recommend to everyone no matter what your favorite genres are there's probably six or seven books that i'd recommend to anyone no matter what their reading tastes are that i really think transcend genre yeah and this is entering that esteemed list for me
So that's our review of Glorious Exploits by Ferdia Lennon. Uh, no wonder it won the debut of the year prize at Waterstones in the UK. So yeah, no, go check it out. Please go read it. It's something that you could fit in so quickly. I read it in a day. Uh, it was just wonderful. Uh, it, it's an easy book to slot in. It's a nice palette cleanser as well. Yeah. And it will leave a lasting imprint upon you for a long, long time. But let us know in the comments below. Will you pick it up? Well, the message of this is please do. Please do. Truth and courage. The brothers go in. The brothers go in.